Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we've got a story that I wanted to go over that uh, totally just really blew by me, and it's a couple of different ones. Uh, first up, it talks about can Andrew Yang turn New York into the world's cryptocurrency capital? And this really is a piggyback story to what we learned about from the mayor of Miami, who already said that he is going to implement uh, Bitcoin for a number of factors. So we'll take a deep dive into why this is, I feel, is so important and really overlooked as, uh, you know, just a couple of mayors or potential mayors who could turn Bitcoin into a powerhouse more so than what it already is. On top of that, we're going to take a look at what is going on in the Twitterverse as far as uh, my grandson's favorite YouTube star, Mr. Beast, who, if you don't know, has almost 10 million followers on uh, Twitter. That's not the big deal. Uh, he's got over 53, actually 56, 70, 73, 74 million followers on YouTube. And he is talking about how great Bitcoin is and how that will bring in more people into our space. And then finally, we're going to quickly talk about an update to the DNU stake pool. I want to say thanks to everybody who has donated or has uh, become a delegate. Uh, we are well on our way to becoming saturated. And uh, who knows, when I have to actually do a third uh, stake pool, we will see. Anyhow, we'll get into all those things, but first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is the 21st. It's about 3:30 uh, p.m. Uh, El Paso, Texas time. We've already done a video today where we talked about, which was one of my biggest downfalls, I guess you'd call it, or fears or whatever, uh, where I talked about how I'm having a real hard time with uh, selling my cryptocurrency at this point because I've already laid it all out. And uh, there's a lot of pros and cons that I went over in that video. So I'll link at the very end. So if you want to check it out, go ahead. But really, I think what it comes down to <clears throat> is greed. And uh, greed, for lack of a better word, is good, but not really good, especially when I'm trying to just follow a plan and be disciplined. So go ahead and check that video out. I'll link at the very end. Let's take a look what's uh, happened in the span of just three or four hours. Same thing, really. Bitcoin is, is actually the same thing. Bitcoin is 57.5. 1928, Binance Coin still in that third spot. The big thing is that Cardano and Tether, and Polkadot's doing great, you know. I, every time I, I, I skip over something, everybody's like, hey, we'll just skip over X, Y, Z. I'm like, well, because I didn't really talk about it. But so Polkadot's doing fine, $38. Tether's Tether, nobody cares. Cardano is flipping back and forth. XRP, watch out. <laughs> or whatever, right? So it's pretty much the same thing. It's a Sunday, not too many, too, not too much really goes on. And in all honesty, I thought there was gonna be more of a dip because that's usually what happens in the weekend, but that is not what's going on. What I want to take a look at is using trade the chain and see what's gonna go up. Beta fuel. If you do not watch Digital Dave over at Crazy for Cryptos, you gotta watch that guy's genius. And uh, he's the one that uh, talked to me about Theta, Theta Fuel. He's the one that, that talked to me about Bitcoin Cash and told me, set me straight. Not that it's like going like, to take over everything, but it's going to do pretty well. And I, I agree with, with him on that one. But Theta Fuel, man, Dave was right. Look at that. In the next hour, it's probably going to go up 10% or so. And then on the negative, it's 0.47. So if you're looking for a swing trade, again, not financial advice. This is something from Trade the Chain. They crawl all the, uh, the interwebs and the blog posts, and they have a direct API into Twitter. Uh, that's something to look into. Uh, also, 0x looks like, and these are all 90% accuracy. So just so you know, 5.7 up, Orchid's going to go up, geez, 7%, Troy. So the real question isn't what's going to go up in crypto and digital assets. Really, you just throw a dart and be like, well, you know, that tomato coin, bam, got it. But in all honesty, it's what's going to go up 2x, 10x, 50x, 100x. That's the real question, and that's where the big winners are made. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top story. So I'm excited about this one. Uh, first of all, it's um, this guy, John Mac uh, Glean. I don't know how to say his name, but excellent writer. Never heard of him before. This is actually from the South China Morning Post. So, sir. So John here made a pretty good op-ed piece, and he talks about Andrew Yang, who ran for the President of the United States. And uh, just missed it, but uh, there's a lot of uh, followers of him, Yang Gang, and he was huge for cryptocurrency. He wanted to like really, you know, go down that route. So this article starts off like this. I just got to read this to you because I thought it was so interesting. Uh, he says, in America and Americans and selected nonfiction, John Steinbeck wrote this. New York's an ugly city. Dirty. Its climate is a scandal. Its politics are used to frighten children. Its traffic is madness. Its competition is murderous. But there's one thing about it. Once you have lived in New York and it's become your home, no place is good enough. I thought it was just a great 
uh, are, are just a great intro piece for a paragraph. And you can kind of tell what kind of uh, writer it is just on the very first uh, sentence and even paragraph. So uh, this one already had me, me hooked. But to get into like the meat and potatoes of the whole thing, uh, Andrew Yang, in an effort to save the city he loves from the apparently unlovable Bill de Blasio, <laughs> funny, Yang is running for mayor. But the big thing is he wants to transform the city into a hub for Bitcoin and other crypto. So he's not just Bitcoin, a lot of different things. And he says, if Yang has his way, he could well combine the acronyms for New York and Bitcoin into NYBTC. I thought that was, pretty, uh, was a pretty good write-up. And then uh, the, this last is, is a quote from Ross Bro. If you're old like me, you remember Ross Bro. He ran for president, didn't make it out, but uh, he had some really good statements. And one of those was, talk is cheap, words are plentiful, and deeds are precious. So we've heard a lot of people talk about these things but have they actually implemented? That is always the question. Look at what people actually accomplish and do as opposed to what they're just saying. Makes sense, right? So with this one, I just thought, ah, just another you know, piece about you know, Andrew Yang and what's gonna go on. But then I remember the piece about uh, four days ago. Let's see what we got here. And it was about, I'll go back to that in a second. Uh, Miami Mayor Francis Suarez on push to accept Bitcoin to track big tech. And this was uh, just a, a quick snippet on CNBC. I'm not going to play the video. It's uh, about three or four minutes long. I'll link in the description. You can check it out yourself. And the big thing he was asked, uh, the mayor of Miami, is why are you doing this? Why are you going to Bitcoin all of a sudden? Because, you know, what's the whole point? And he says, well, he goes, we want to do it for, you know, two things. Uh, first of all, there's a lot of people in a lot of different states who are fleeing those states because of unbelievable taxes. We see what's going on. And this is just for the Americans. Everybody's leaving California. California is like superly overly taxed and they've got some really crazy laws going on out there. So a lot of these big companies are moving out. Tesla being one of them, Oracle on top of you know a lot of other people. So he says, if they wanna flee over there, let's bring them all over here. And then we can uh, you know start to drop these types of taxes. Hopefully he's talking for Bitcoin, especially for capital gains taxes because over in California, don't quote me, but it's pretty high. I think it's going between 10 and 14% or something like that. Texas has got zero. That's why a lot of people are moving here. And I think in Florida, they're looking for the same thing. And then he talks about how he wants to use Bitcoin and pay people uh, their salaries in Bitcoin. Not everybody, of course, but for uh, city and government employees. Uh, he talks about that um, they want to actually invest into Bitcoin and uh, put some of their treasury into Bitcoin, just like a Michael Saylor, just like a Mass Mutual, just like those big entities and corporations. And then uh, and, and I thought it was interesting how he talks about, I'm, we want to do this. And we want to put our money into it. And I thought to myself, I'm like, is that really a good idea because of you know, what's going on with the fluctuation? And this kind of comes back to this part here. And it's something Michael Saylor said in a tweet. He says, what happens when all the publicly traded Bitcoin miners stop selling Bitcoin and start buying it to hodl using publicly issued equity and debt to cover their expenses, Bitcoin stock to flow goes to infinity, then it goes negative. And this is somebody tweeted out, uh, responded, Bob Burnett. He says, I own three mining companies and that's already our path. Properly capitalized, we don't need to sell and can borrow against our Bitcoin if there are ever issues. So to me, I was like, Okay, well, how does that work? Because I mean, for the average person, when we want to get a loan against our cryptocurrency, we have to put it up as collateral. And we have between six months and uh, three years, depending on the platform. So, you know, that doesn't really make sense because if you're going to, you know, uh, get uh, collateralize your Bitcoin, let's say it's 50,000, then maybe 25,000, then your expenses, well, how do you pay back that debt? And uh, I actually reached out uh, to a friend of mine. And this is Jerry Hall. If you don't know Jerry, he's an OG, uh, original gangster, if people don't know. And he has his own YouTube channel. He's got some pretty high profile guests. And he's really, he's, he's much deeper into crypto than I am. I'm kind of more like uh, the surface, what's going on, what's happening here. But he really digs into the real, real deep, deep, deep nuts and bolts. And he's got uh, you know powerhouse guests like Aurel Powell every so often. So if you got a chance, go ahead and check his uh, channel out. I will link it in the description. So I called him. He's in Costa Rica. And I said, Jerry, I don't understand how this works. And he goes, well, Rob, he goes, you don't understand. He goes, with retail, you know, we have our own little separate ways that we have to do things. But with uh, LLCs, C-Corps, S-Corps, corporations, they have a different way 
uh, as far as like the debt market. So let's say, for instance, these companies here, they want to, you know, borrow against their Bitcoin. So what they would do is just go, okay, here's my Bitcoin uh, and we're going to put it up for six months, two years, three years, five years or whatever else it is. And we're going to give it to you at $75,000, but give us the cash now. And then later on, we'll give you your Bitcoin or your cash or whatever it actually is under that note or, or whatever the agreement is. And then you can just kind of write it all out on that. Bitcoin comes in and then off you go. So with this, if they're doing these, these types of debts, like we can't do that per se, but they can do it like that because they are entities, corporations, whatever you want to say. So they're going to put this up. What does that mean? Bitcoin just kind of hangs out right there. And uh, it, it's the same thing as like for a government, a city like Miami, they say, we're going to put in our treasury. If we need money, they could probably do the same type of thing. Like, look, we have a debt. Here's a hundred Bitcoin. Uh, give us X amount of dollars in five years, we'll pay you back. But guess how much Bitcoin's going to be worth in like five years? If we look at the four-year cycles, probably a pretty good idea. So I'm like, ah, I get it. It's genius, right? So when we take a look at this, and you got the mayor of Miami saying these types of things. Uh, it just goes to me, I'm like, okay, okay, so this is why these government officials who really understand it and really get it and know what they can do with it are really on the ball. So Mayor Francis Suarez is one of the first, if not somebody in Wyoming, I'm sure they're very big in crypto over there because they're always do doing with the, uh, the banking license, so it wouldn't surprise me. But uh, uh, Miami, here we have Suarez. Now we've got Andrew Gang, if he becomes elected, but I haven't heard of anybody else. But the big thing about this was not just that they are going to be uh, forward thinking and very tech savvy, but when they have cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and other ones, they're attracting big businesses. And Mayor Francis says, he goes, just he goes, I can't tell you what it is, but in March, we're going to have a $70 billion hedge fund relocate here to Miami because of what we're doing in cryptocurrencies on top of, and he just called it a major tech company that is globally known. I'm sure you can figure it out. And uh, he says they will be coming also in March. So just by them saying, we are forward thinking, lowering taxes, also going into the future, cryptocurrency digital assets. What happens? A lot of businesses come to those cities. So if you are a mayor, a government official, or anybody else that uh, deals in those, those government sectors. Maybe this is something you should talk to the person above you or just have a real deep conversation with yourself. Like, we need to do this before we get passed on. So uh, that is just one of those things that I see could be a major boom. Imagine if, ah, no, 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 no. Imagine 10% of the major cities in the United States start to adopt this, this policy. And then it ripples off uh, into Canada and then maybe to Mexico. And then to South America, well, obviously over to Europe, uh, different areas, Southeast Asia. Could be a pretty big thing. Just saying, could be, I'm not for sure. So that is what is going on. Also, if anybody knows, anybody's watching this video and knows Mayor Francis Suarez or has connections to him, uh, give me an introduction. I'd love to have him on the show to explain exactly his thoughts. Also, if anybody knows uh, the mayor of Houston or El Paso, the two cities that I live in, I would love to have both of those mayors on to talk to them about the potential of Bitcoin and crypto, digital assets, all those things that could help them, not only help them out with just regulation, just with taxes, but treasury and to really build a future. Anyhow, that's what's going on in that. Let me know what you think in the comments section and let's move on to our next piece. Ah, that's Jerry. So next piece is very short, just so you know. Uh, this is Mr. Beast, and uh, he has a millions and millions of subscribers on both uh, sites as far as uh, Twitter and YouTube. And not that it's, it's a big thing for us. Demographically, my channel, actually, no, that's not true. My channel has, the ages are between 34 and 55. That's the, the, the majority of it. And it's a bunch of dudes, which, you know, what are you gonna do? So like, like with that, uh, most of you guys and gals, you have kids, and I'm sure they watch uh, Mr. Beast. So we are really getting hit as far as crypto from both sides, right? We've got a lot of the older generation, even the baby boomers who are looking into this. Now we've got uh, this younger generation and a lot of influencers getting into crypto. It just goes to show you that this, these are just one of those perfect opportunities 
to get in right now before everything starts to really blow up. Now, do I think, and we talked about this in today's video, do I think that everything is going to blow up forever? Like, do I think that everything's going to go perpetually up to the stars and uh, we will hit 100,000 Bitcoin, 150,000, 300,000, 500,000, 1 million, 10 million? No, I don't. I think that's, that is ridiculous, especially with the altcoins. So when people start to talk about like, Ethereum's going to go up forever and, you know, Cardano's going to go up forever. There's, it just doesn't work like that. I think the one with the biggest opportunity or chance to do that would probably be Bitcoin, especially with what everybody is you know, getting behind it. And I hope that's the case. It's actually so much the case that I've actually changed my exit strategy for Bitcoin, like I talked about before, from uh, you know, just the basic exit strategy. Uh, and I, did, I came up with 80-20. It's actually going to be 50-50. And I know people will say, well, how could you sell any Bitcoin? Because I got plans. And uh, I got goals and uh, I got a, uh, a plan of action in place. And uh, if there's something that comes to me and someone says, hey, Rob, did you hear that they're going to start to buy Bitcoin for uh, the United States uh, reserve currency? Then I probably won't sell. But uh, short of that, um, I, don't, I, I think I'm going to stick to my plan for right now. If there's some other information that comes in, hey, I'm open to it. I'm just, I'm just an investor. So if something comes up. Let me know and uh, we'll see where it goes. Anyhow, those are the two pieces I wanted just to bring to you today. Uh, a lot of great things as far as mass adoption coming. I mean, just as far as like institutions and then, you know, local governments and then to, you know, uh, these influencers, pretty good year. And uh, that's the big stuff. I just want to finish up with just saying that uh, the D News Cardano stake pool is doing, it's doing amazingly well. Uh, I'm pretty, everybody's pretty happy with it. And uh, just so you know, we did a update, updated um, Cardano staking video where we talked about the amount of delegation. So right now, even though it says, let me blow this up so you can actually see this. Even though it actually says 48% right there for saturation, um, in the at the end of March, the saturation point is going to go from 63 million to 32 million, uh, or 31 million, excuse me. So no, 32 million, I'm sorry. So I don't want to get to that point. So I'm telling everybody, uh, no more delegations to DNews. If you are delegating to DNews right now, uh, you can just stay everything there or keep everything there on the uh, DNews uh, website where uh, you can find all the information. You can find how much is actually being saturated and you can reallocate to our second stake pool, which is doing fantastic in, uh, gosh, 10 days, 10 days, seven days, ah, somewhere around there. We're at uh, 13 and a half million and our saturation point is 20%. So we can only take 30 more percent and that's it because I don't want to run into a, a problem with if you oversaturate, people lose rewards and I will not let that happen. So uh, just so you know, that is exactly what's going on. If you want to take a look at the actual uh, website that I was talking about as far as the Dan Cardano stake pool in the description, like I just clicked on there, it just says Dan stake pool and it'll take you to uh, the actual uh, website where you can find everything else about it. Also, you can see this, the saturation levels just by clicking on level one and level two. Here's the video we just did an update. You can check that out. And uh, you can find all the, the metrics as far as our return on ADA, which is like, you know, your return on investment. Industry average is four to 6%. We're at 542 so doing pretty good. And we're doing our job, so we're pretty happy. And uh, that's really it. Uh, that's what's going on today. So look, uh, if you made it this far, let me just tell you this. Thanks for coming all the way to the very end. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, why don't you hit the thumbs up? Also consider subscribing because we do a lot of things that are very time sensitive. So uh, that would be great if you could do that. And then lastly, uh, if you like these types of videos, I'll put two up on the left and right. Let YouTube do its magic. No, no, actually, I'll do my magic today. And I'll put uh, the one I was talking about as far as um, the one from today, where we talked about my biggest fears and why I'm having a hard time with some things. And the second one, I'll put uh, the steak video up there. So, so that is it. Uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.